I'm going to show you the ironclad three-step process to mastering the complex skill of writing. Now I'm talking specifically in this video about narrative writing. So fiction, memoir, narrative-driven nonfiction, anything where you're trying to write down a narrative, this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you how you can master the complex skill of writing. Now this is about mastering the skill of writing not just stringing a bunch of words together into sentences so you can churn out a manuscript in 30 days and throw it up on Amazon and call yourself an author. If that's for you, that's totally fine. You should stop watching this video. There's lots of videos and trainings that'll help you do that. That's not what we're trying to do here. What we wanna do here at StoryGrid is help you become a master at the skill of writing. And so the goal here is not to just churn out a manuscript or just teach you three little tips that'll get you writing in the next week. Instead, what we're gonna focus on is how to take a normally 10 to 20 year process of mastering the skill of writing, and let's cut that down to just five to eight years instead. So if you stop just randomly writing and reading and hoping that churning out words every day will turn you into a masterful writer somehow magically, and instead approach learning this complex skill of writing systematically, you can level up so much faster, so much more consistently and cut down the amount of time it takes and the amount of frustration and just wandering in the woods. My name is Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO of StoryGrid and I've been working with writers for 15 years. All of the training we do is based on the 30 plus years experience writing and editing of my partner, Sean Coyne. He's the founder and creator of StoryGrid. So the first step on this three-step process is to break it down into individual micro skills. So the skill of writing is not really one skill. It actually encapsulates a bunch of micro skills underneath it, and you have to learn each one of those. So the first step is to take this big macro skill of writing and break it down into its individual micro skills so that you can focus on those. For instance, if you're trying to play the guitar, you don't just sit down and start trying to play the guitar. You first start learning how to strum to a rhythm or playing your scales or figuring out where the notes on the guitar is or how to play chords and how to string them together and how to actually string a guitar and tune a guitar. There's all of these individual micro skills that then eventually come together and you can play the guitar really well. For writing, we're looking at skills like how to create change in your story using the five commandments, how to write misattune, compelling dialogue, how to create characters, that your readers will love and care about, how to create tension and conflict in your writing with objects of desire. In fact, I did a whole video just breaking down the 10 skills that you need to write a scene. So I'll put that down in the description as well. But anytime you wanna learn any complex skill, especially a skill like writing, you don't just start by learning writing. The best place to start is to figure out and identify what those micro skills are and then individually work on those. And this leads to step number two, which is deliberate practice. Now to talk about deliberate practice, I'm gonna to go to the expert, James Clear. He's the author of the mega best-selling book, Atomic Habits. And let's go to his article on deliberate practice and see what he has to say about it. So what we're trying to do with deliberate practice is get away from just mindlessly churning out words. Deliberate practice is purposeful and systematic. It requires focused attention, and is conducted with the specific goal of improving performance. So this is where those micro skills come in, is that when we sit down to write, we're not just randomly writing, we're gonna focus on a specific skill and improve the performance. So in the beginning, showing up and putting in your reps is the most important thing. So if you're not writing at all, just writing every day, that's a good first step. But after a while, we begin carelessly overlooking small errors and we miss daily opportunities for improvement. And this is what I see with writers that just write every day, write every day, write every day, is they're just churning out the same errors every day. So mindless activity is the enemy of deliberate practice. Too often, we assume we are getting better simply because we are gaining experience. In reality, we are merely reinforcing our current habits, not improving them. So when we're working on something, we can only consciously focus on a couple things at a time at most. And so when we're trying to learn how to write, we shouldn't be just sitting down and churning out sentences and scenes and manuscripts because it's just too many skills and you're not even sure which ones you're practicing. Instead, because we took that big macro skill of writing and we broke it down into its micro skills, now we can take each of those micro skills and specifically 
focus on learning and getting better at one of those. So again, back to the analogy of the guitar is I can focus on just a few chords at a time, focus on strumming a specific rhythm at a time until I get really good at that. And then I can move on to the next thing. So the idea here is you work on an individual skill until it levels up to the point that you can move it to your subconscious and you automatically do it so that you can focus on the next skill. Again, just looking at a single scene, you've got to have 10 things working at least at the same time for your scene to work. There's no way that you can consciously get 10 things correct while you write. So once we break down this big macro skill of writing into its individual micro skills, then we can focus individually on those skills, leveling up in each of those, knowing it's going to come together into this big macro skill of writing. So now we're moving on to step three of mastering the complex skill of writing. And again, we're going to go back to James Clear. Perhaps the greatest difference between deliberate practice and simple repetition is this feedback. One consistent finding across disciplines is that coaches are often essential for sustaining deliberate practice. In many cases, it is nearly impossible to both perform a task and measure your progress at the same time. Good coaches can track your progress, find small ways to improve, and hold you accountable to delivering your best effort each day. And here's the thing about writing. This is what makes writing so hard, is that out of all of the creative endeavors, it is the hardest to get immediate feedback on. Just think about it. Back to my analogy of playing the guitar. If you have an ear for music, and you're trying to learn something new on the guitar, and you play the wrong note, you immediately know it's the wrong note right? You can hear it. Same thing if you're painting. If you're trying to paint and it doesn't look like the thing in your head or the thing you're actually trying to paint, then you're doing it wrong. If I'm in woodworking and I'm trying to put together a table and I put something together and the corner and the edges don't actually meet, I know I'm doing it wrong. But in writing, it's so hard to know when you're doing it wrong. And then what happens, and this was touched on earlier in James Clear's article, is that you start tuning your ear to the wrong thing. So in your writing, you start thinking what you're doing is right, and then it's hard to tell when it's wrong. And so this is why you need an independent coach to actually help you figure out what's wrong with your writing. So how do you find that coach? The first way is to find a writing buddy where you both are learning together and you're trying to level up your writing. But that can be hard because often it becomes the blind leading the blind, and you don't know if the feedback you're giving is any good. And then if you've ever been a part of a writer's group or even worked with three or four different editors out there in the world, you'll know that a lot of times when you show somebody your work, you get random, unhelpful feedback. So either the feedback is soft and unactionable and you're not really sure, or it's just their opinion and you don't actually know if it applies to your writing. And then even when you try to go to an expert, if you ask three different editors, you'll get three completely different pieces of feedback. So how do you fix this? This brings us to the shameful promotion part of the video. Honestly, this is what was driving me crazy too when I was trying to learn writing. This is what drives my partner, Sean Coyne, crazy as well, is that there's no systematic way to give objective feedback to writers. And so that's what we've been working on here at StoryGrid. If you've watched any of my other videos, you can see that we have a really systematic way that we look at everything. And so we've trained editors and editor mentors so that they can give that kind of feedback to a writer. And what we're really proud of is that if you show the same scene to three different editor mentors at StoryGrid, your feedback's gonna be 90 to 95% the same at least because we actually have a systematic way of doing this. And so the best thing that you can do is learn the story grid methodology of how to analyze writing from the big macro story all the way down to the scene and make sure you're looking at it through that lens. That's why we developed all of this is to help writers actually have a systematic way to both learn writing and get feedback on their writing. But back to step three of learning a complex skill is you have to get feedback. This is what I see more than anything holding writers back when I just look out in the world is that they're just writing and writing and writing in a vacuum and they never get feedback on their writing. And then when they try to, it's soft feedback, it's unhelpful. It doesn't give them actionable ways to level up their skills of writing. So if you wanna master the complex skill of writing, it's a three-step process. First, 
you break down that big macro skill into micro skills. Then you practice each of those individual micro skills, leveling up your skill level at each one of those. And then you've got to get feedback. You've got to have somebody that knows what they're doing, has an actual systematic approach to look at what you're producing, give you feedback, and tell you how you can improve. The best place to start in learning this stuff is at StoryGrid. We have tons of free resources at storygrid.com. Make sure you sign up for our email newsletter. That's the best place to get the newest stuff. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell. I'm going to keep putting out videos showing you what these skills are and how you can learn them. But as always, thanks for writing. Thanks for being a part of our community here at StoryGrid, and I'll see you next time.